Hey, I'm Kim and I post beauty and lifestyle videos on this channel and I'm a future PhD student. So today I thought I would share five ideas on what to do during the summer before starting your graduate program. So not only am I about to be a PhD student, but I also have my master's degree. So I'll be kind of talking about both experiences and both all these tips are things that I either like wish I did going from my undergrad to my master's or things that I'm doing this summer going from uh, the workforce into my PhD program. So I hope these are helpful for you um, and I hope that they also are kind of broad enough that no matter if you are doing a master's program, a PhD program, something in the social sciences, um, law school, med school, that these are kind of, you can kind of take them and apply them as you need to, to get ready for your graduate program this summer. All right, so let's get into the tips. So my first tip is this summer, try to read those must have books in your field. So you probably know which ones work for you. They're the books that all your coworkers are like, oh my God, did you read this? Oh, we should start a book club on this book. Oh, this is just like what we do. Um, usually these are like memoirs or nonfiction. And this summer would be a great time to read through those so that when you start your graduate program and you inevitably get asked like, oh yeah, have you read this? Or um, what did you think of this book that you won't say that you haven't gotten around to it because you did and you read it this summer. That is definitely something that I've been doing, reading kind of books that are related in my field and are like must have reads that I just hadn't got around to it either because I was too busy with school, like if you are finishing up your undergraduate degree or with work where it feels like you just don't have time to read a book related to your field. So definitely do that this summer. Also related to books, so I'm keeping it as one tip is if you do know like a textbook that everyone like has for the first year or like a class, a core book that people carry around with them for the rest of their program, definitely pick that up earlier just so that over the summer you can kind of get a grasp on things. Especially true if you are like switching fields. I'm kind of going from the social sciences to public health so I thought getting the methods book would be really great so that I can re familiarize myself with a lot of concepts and know kind of the terminology that might be slightly different from the field I was coming from to the field I am now. That way I'll have a little bit of a leg up when I'm starting to take those classes and I'll be like, oh yeah, that term's familiar. So definitely if you do know of any of the textbooks that are kind of like the must haves, the ones that people keep all through their program, check those out and familiarize yourself. You don't have to read the whole thing because you're gonna be doing that in the school year, but if you can kind of skim through, read the first couple of chapters, it'll help you when you're actually like having that fast paced environment of graduate school. My next tip is kind of related to technology and what technology to prepare yourself with over the summer. Similar to the books, if you are switching fields, if you are just wanting to get some foundational stuff before that fast paced grad school life, I highly recommend Coursera for auditing different classes and seeing different video lectures. Like I said, I'm switching fields, so I am doing some of these Coursera classes. I'm doing a lot of the Johns Hopkins biostatistics and public health ones, just so I know the terms and can kind of already have that foundational knowledge before school. Um, Coursera has so many different courses from so many different universities. It's really great, even if you wanna learn something not related to going back to school or your program, there's a lot of great resources. Also with technology and with Coursera is knowing what software you're going to be using in your graduate program. This is especially important if you are doing a research based program where you're going to have to be learning a statistical software. But it, I can think of a million different ways that software is used in every graduate program, whether that is learning the different library databases or um, even just getting brushing up on your Microsoft Office and Excel skills. But in a research-based program, you will be using a lot of statistical software. And 
honestly your teachers don't really teach you that they teach you the terminology like how to read output how to interpret those things but they're not going to be like okay you click here for this this code is this so that's a great use of your time over the summer is to really get a good idea of the software even if you just open it so you know where all the buttons are and that's also where Coursera is great because there's classes on R, there's classes on SAS, on Tableau, um, on all different types of software that you may be using in your graduate program. So that's a great tip for the summer is to download all that software. Your university, if the programs aren't already open source, probably has a great discount, especially on like Microsoft Office, so that you can have those programs already on your computer. You've already opened them. You know how to use them. Uh, in the basic concepts so then when your teachers are teaching you the terminology and interpretation you already know what buttons to click and some basic coding to type out your syntax so that's another super helpful tip for graduate school my next idea and it's something that i didn't really do in my master's program but your phd kind of forces you to but it is something that i wish i did and that's learning more about your school that you're going to and the different professors that you may have, especially if you are going to need a, a committee on a thesis or a dissertation. So familiar yourself with the work of the professors at your university is a great way to prepare yourself for graduate school. If you are starting a PhD program, you already have probably your academic advisor and who you'll be working with at least for the first year, of course things can change, but definitely reach out to that person and talk to them. Ask them what they think you could be working on over the summer to get ready. That's how I got that idea to get the textbook. My um, advisor mentioned that that's like the must have textbook that everyone uses and that it would be great for me to kind of like look through it. So definitely even if you don't have like an advisor set kind of reading what articles and publications and news articles are coming out of your program so you can kind of see what different specializations are there what professors to reach out to even for informational interviews so definitely know a little bit more about your school it's totally okay if you don't get in that deep and you aren't emailing professors but you're just like aware of it when i did my master's I met my thesis advisor through being in, in her class and at the end of the semester I started working in her lab and same with my undergrad I didn't start working into a lab until after I was there like a year and taking different courses with different professors but it's still a great idea to know which professors have the most like work coming out so that you can kind of see what courses to take and that kind of thing so definitely like do your research which you probably already did to apply to the school but now that you're like you're in, you can get even more in depth. Another tip to do over the summer before graduate school is getting your planning system in check. So you probably already have your system pretty well set after going through high school and going through college where it is a lot of making sure you know how to remember deadlines, assignments, extracurriculars, all of that. But you may have been using the free student planners that like your high school gives you or at the college. And maybe you're like, hmm, I do want to upgrade or try something new. There's a ton of planning resources online. So you can kind of see different planners on YouTube videos, on Instagrams. The planning community is huge. I love it. I love seeing paper and pens and stickers. So definitely something this summer to kind of figure out what type of planning system you want when starting graduate school. Especially like all the stores are gonna have all the cute new planners out during this back to school time. So for the longest time, I used a Filofax and with a horizontal layout. I love my Filofax for just drawing down the events I need, both personal and school. But I was thinking that during going back to school, I'm going to want something that is hourly so I can kind of see my different times because you do have different courses blocked out and to balance that with an RA ship or a TA position and that kind of stuff will get really, really hectic. So it'd be great to have an hourly view. I've used the Erin Condren Life Planner before and I found that that when I was working full time and I had like a nine to five schedule, it wasn't really that useful to me because I was physically at my office from nine to five. So I didn't really need to block out my time as much. Going into graduate school, I definitely wanted something hourly. 
and I've decided this summer to go with a bullet journal. Since I've been planning so long, I know what I like and what I don't like, and so kind of building a customizable planner really appealed to me, and that if I kind of set it up over the summer, I won't have to worry about like decorating and planning it throughout the year and having like a weekly schedule. So that's something I'm doing this summer, but there's so many different planning options so that you can find what one's right for you. My final tip, and this is especially important if you are having some like chunk of a break between either undergrad and grad school or from like working and school, and that's to keep your morning routine and your night routine as if you were in school and had your school times, if at all possible. You don't want to get into the habit of staying up till midnight, 3 a.m. and sleeping until 10 or noon when school starts and you have an 8.30 class. So I just registered for my classes, so I kind of know what times I should be like waking up and need to get on campus. So definitely don't let your schedule stray too far in the summer for what it will be in the fall because that'll be really, really hard to get yourself on sleep schedule. And you definitely don't wanna miss your orientation day or your first few days of classes because you overslept. I have several different morning routine videos on my channel and how to create your own morning routine. So definitely now in the summer, it is a time to experiment. See if you are like an early morning person or what time you naturally wake up and try to get yourself, and you can do it slowly if you start over the summer, ready to have like your best, most productive day when you're in grad school. All right, so those are my tips on five things you can do over the summer to get yourself ready for graduate school. Let me know in the comments what things really helped you or what things you're planning on doing that you think will really help you when you start grad school in the fall. Um, hope everyone's having a great summer. And if you want more fun things to do over the summer that aren't academic related, last week I posted five hobbies that you can teach yourself over the summer. So you can balance out these like really nitty gritty academic -y ones with some fun ones to have a really fun and productive summer. All right, I'll see you next time. Bye.